Hey everyone, Greg Barbosa here. Earlier last week I posted some photos from a bar called Little Trouble in Atlanta, Georgia. It was just like Blade Runner, Outrun, Vaporwave theme bar. Lots of red, neon, cement work. It was gorgeous. Great drinks, great aesthetic, great vibe. Loved it. Um, I took some photos from there and shared them onto Twitter and Instagram and people seem to really like them. But more than anything, people wanted to know how I took those photos on my phone and how I edited them before sharing them. So today I want to talk about the two apps that I use nearly daily to get the photos that I want out of my phone as best as possible. So let's dive on in. Okay, so first things first, the two apps I use are Halide and Darkroom. Halide is the app I use to take all my photos on my phone, mostly because of its really minimal, clean interface and because it supports taking photos in raw image formats. Darkroom is my favorite photo editing app because it gives me so much more control in a photo editing app and makes it really clean and easy to do so. It doesn't throw in a bunch of frills like cloud syncing services or presets or profiles. I mean, technically they have presets and I can make my own, but they don't really force it down on you to the point where it becomes cumbersome to use the application. So Halide and Darkroom are the two applications I use every single day to get these photos and to edit them the way I want. Because I knew I was gonna be indoors in a very dark scene, I wanted to make sure that I could get as much control out of the camera when taking the photos as possible. So I made sure to launch Halide and I made sure that RAW was enabled when I was taking the photo. I wanted to make sure that I was gonna get as much color and as much possibility for post-processing as possible. When you shoot in RAW, you're essentially getting the RAW image from the iPhone's camera instead of the post-processed one by Apple. Whenever you take a photo with your iPhone, Apple applies its own color tweaks like saturation and contrast and brightness and saves it into a JPEG file. With Halide, you can do it as RAW so you get just the pure image out of the camera. This opens up the possibility for a lot more photo editing later. So, I launched Halide, did a quick tap to focus. I pulled down the exposure because I knew I was in a dark scene and I didn't want iOS to like oversaturate the image. And then I took my photo. And because Halide is built in with Darkroom like really, really well, I could just do one button tap to go right into Darkroom and start editing my photos. Okay, so after you've gotten all your shots taken in Halide, making sure you set it up as best as you possibly can, let's jump into Darkroom to edit them. For the purpose of this video, I've gone ahead and created a little album with all the photos I took at Little Trouble. Um, we're gonna go through all the photos I took and just get an idea why I picked the ones I did and how I edited them and what I was thinking during the edit. So to start, we're gonna start with my favorite scene that I saw at Little Trouble. It was this big neon sign with an LT, really neon-y to represent Little Trouble. So I knew I saw some pictures on Instagram already of people walking in front of the signage. I was gonna wait for somebody to do that and I was even gonna direct one of my friends to do it. But after only about 15 seconds of waiting, somebody walked right in front of it and I got this shot I got here. I'm really proud of it, I really do like it. But I also knew there was some stuff I wanted to edit. I did like that he was kind of in motion, blurring against the backdrop. It gives a more animated feel. And that's something that's kind of cool with the iPhone. Because the shutter can't always completely freeze an image, it'll do a nice natural blurring that can add some action to the camera. So, there's already a bunch of things wrong with this shot. It's crooked, it's too far away, um, the background perspective seems a little bit off, and that's all things that we can fix in Darkroom. But, I don't wanna spend time correcting the size or crop or anything. Right now, I just wanna edit the photo to give the feel of what I felt when I was there. So I'm gonna jump into this third option here in Darkroom, and I'm gonna immediately bring down the shadows. I'm gonna go all the way up and all the way down so you get an idea of what it looks like. Here's the shadows all the way high, and here's the shadows all the way low. Because I knew where we were at, and it had a really grungy, dark feel, I wanna bring the shadows down, not as far as it was before, but I wanna bring it down and bring that feel back to the image. Because sometimes the iPhone camera is sensitive enough to pick up a lot more light and oversaturate or bring in highlights that don't need to be there. So from there, I'm gonna bring down the contrast. I'm gonna bring down the highlights a little bit because that neon had a really massive highlight that I wasn't a fan of. And bring up some of that saturation to really make that neon pop. From here, I'm honestly almost done with the photo. The only other thing I might do is go into the HSL, the hue saturation luminance sliders, and adjust the color of that neon. So I've selected the red colors. I wanna make it 
little bit more red. This is a little bit too much. This is desaturated completely. I wanna bring back that red that I saw in person there. I noticed that the iPhone camera at Little Trouble kept struggling and bringing a lot of pink imagery out instead of the more emphatic red that I saw everywhere. So let's tweak this a little bit more. And I basically got the shot there. Now I'm just gonna run some little crops on it and some perspective adjustments. But basically the photo's really done. We'll straighten it out. Since I knew I was gonna post this to Instagram, I wanna do a four or five crop on the image. And I wanna really center this guy in. Let me bring this up back a little bit. Cool. Now the perspective, I wanna adjust it a little bit to help straighten it out. And there we go. The only other thing I would probably do from here is throw this photo into another external app and remove this little light at the top, kind of just clean it out. I don't really like that light there, but really this is basically that photo completed. So let's go ahead and edit the other photos and I'll walk through again what I was thinking as I took each photo. So these are my friends sitting down and they're just talking, chatting, just pretending to not be paying attention to me taking obvious photos of them in a bar. Um, so I started taking the photos really fast and you can see where there's blurring in the, their hands here. Mostly that happens because I was taking the photos in automatic mode on Halide and the iPhone shutter was trying to freeze the image, but instead because the shutter couldn't keep up with people, it ends up looking blurred. So when they're talking like this, their hands end up looking blurred. I kind of like that. It makes things feel a little bit more alive, but I only like that if the face is clearly in focus. In these here, her hands actually get covered by it. Her hands cover her face when she's talking and my friend's hands here are a little bit too distracting the way they're moving. So I looked for a photo that wasn't as distracting. This is an interesting one here. This is a really good example of how the iPhone camera came out very pink when it took a picture of the red neon. Um, I knew this is what I wanted because I could work with it and edit it in post, but this photo wasn't perfect yet. So I then found this one of my friend here. Uh, he's laughing, his hand isn't really that blurred. My other friend's hand is kind of blurred, but it's obscured by the cup so you can't see it. So this is the one I was gonna edit. So again, I'll dive in and I'll bring down the shadows, up the contrast. One of the things I notice is that the neon bar is almost white because of how bright it is. So I'm gonna bring that down with the highlights. So it doesn't have that much of a glow. Let me look, increase it. You can see the bar is much, much whiter and I bring it down and it seems a little bit more clean. So I like that, kind of like a Darth Vader lightsaber vibe. Um, from here, I'll bring the saturation a little bit more into the red and I'll go to the HSL sliders again and bring more red in the image, that's too much. Let me bring up the luminance, a little bit more red, and then crop how I want to get the crop done. Because both of my friends are here, I'll put them on the kind of rule of thirds line. This was a little bit trickier because the light, the background, little wall behind them isn't perfectly lined up with them, that's because where the table was set but it looks okay for me. And I just took it on my phone and I couldn't be happier with that. And let me adjust the perspective a little bit here. Let me fix the perspective. This will actually help the image kind of straighten out a little bit because I know the wall was crooked when I took the photo because of where I was sitting. But I think this came out pretty good. And there we go. One of the cool things you can do with Darkroom is go to a previous photo you edited and copy your edits and paste it into another photo. So I'll do that here. Pasted it. I may have to actually go ahead and crop it again. That's kind of annoying, but there we go. I don't like how red that bar is. So let me go into the HSL here and bring everything down. I think the contrast a little bit too contrasty. Let me bring up the shadows a little bit here. And there we go. It's more or less what I would do right there. From there, I like to look at the, all the photos from just like a bird's eye view and see if all the colors kind of match more or less. From here, I can see that this one right here, pretty red, almost pinkish. This photo is really red. This photo here is really red. And basically, they all kind of have the same theme of what I wanted. 
I hope you liked that. That was a, a quick review on how I take my photos and edit my photos before posting them to Twitter or Instagram. I don't go crazy into my edits, especially on the mobile phone. I wanna take a photo and convey what I felt and saw in that moment, especially with these photos from uh, Little Trouble in Atlanta. That place had a grungy, dark feel and almost otherworldly, so I wanted to convey that in my photo edit. If I took those photos just on my iPhone with the regular camera app and didn't edit them, what you'd probably get is a lot of washed out pink scenes because the phone just wasn't able to get exactly what I wanted in that moment. Some of the tips I'd recommend for you if you're looking to shoot more on your phone. The first one is just take tons of photos. Take photos daily. Learn how your camera reacts in different lighting environments so the next time you come up to that lighting environment, you know exactly what to do with your phone, whether you want to bring up the exposure or bring down the exposure. Talking about exposure, if you're shooting photos at night, try to bring down your exposure if you know you're gonna edit the photo afterwards. What that allows you to do is bump up the exposure in post and still maintain all the detail of the image without losing anything. Um, oh, a really good tip. Use the two times zoom on your camera or the telephoto lens Halide is really good at this because it has this little button you can hit for just 2x. Use that more often. That second lens has a different aperture and gathers light a little bit differently. So depending on your subject separation, you can create some really cool bokeh effects naturally without using portrait mode and just make an awesome looking image. If you want to, you can see all the other photos I've taken with my phone and edited over at Instagram.com slash Greg Barbosa. Hit me up on Twitter if you got any other questions, any tech related stuff, any ideas you want. I've got plenty of stuff related to phones and photography and videography that I plan on recording. So let me know if you got any questions, any comments, concerns, complaints, all that good stuff. If you watched it this far, thank you very much. My name is Greg Barbosa and enjoy the rest of your day. All right, bye. Wow, that was only take like 600. I hope it came out well because I'm exhausted now.